Magandang gabi sa bawat isa. Tayo ay tuloy mag-aaral tayo ng salita ng Diyos. Samahan niyo ako sa isang maikling panalangin. Father, we thank you Lord for this evening. Before we come to your throne, we ask thee, O God, to forgive us of our sin. Inihiling namin din ang presensya ng banal na Espiritu na bigyan kami ng enlightenment at sensitivity sa mga sal- uh, mensahe na bibitawan ngayong gabi, Panginoon, at hinihiling namin ang presensya mo. Salamat po sa inyong kabutihan, sa amin lahat. Kami po ay Lord, uh, alam ng banal na Espiritu ang nagiging amin uh, professor at tuturoan kami kung paanong mamuhay ng maayos sa gabing ito, Lord. To those who are listening, I pray for them, Lord, na magiging sensitive sila at uh, Lord, lahat na natutunan namin ay i-apply sa aming buhay. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Ang ating title ngayon gabi ay A Call to Christian Living. Ito ay continuation po ng ating mensahe last February 16, uh, Exhortation to Consultation. Ang ating scripture reading ay makikita sa 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his lifetime in the flesh for the last of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough for, of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentile. When we walk in lewdness, lust, trans, drunkenness, reveries, drinking parties, about and abominable idolatry, idolatries. In regards to this, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same blood flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. So they will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in this in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers, and above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable. To one another without grumbling, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracle of God. If anyone minister, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified. Through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Ang text natin ay makikita, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Meron pang isang scripture reading makikita sa 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 1-14. If you have time, please read this one in your home. So, ito ay tinatawag lahat ng Kristiyano kung paano mabuhay ng maayos. Sabi ni Apostle Peter sa verse 1, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh. And then sinabi niya, Uh, ito po ay tinutukoy sa 1 Peter 3 chapter 18 to 22. Prinesent ng ni Apostle Peter yung katotohanan. Sabi niya sa 1 Peter 3 verse 18, 
Christ also had once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. So yun appeal ni Apostle Peter sa atin lahat ay makikita dito sa atin uh, teksto ang sabi niya, arm, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. Ang ibig sabihin, magkaroon tayo ng parehas na uh, same mind, uh, parehas na isip ni Kristo. No? That means we have to think, have the same mind with our Lord Jesus Christ. So, ang passage dito sa 1 Peter 4 verse 1, yung teksto na sinabi ko, For he that had suffered in the flesh had ceased from sin. So, sinasabi dito sa verse 1 and verse 2, ang ibig sabihin, pag isang tao ay uh, inaarm natin, sarili natin, or kinakapi natin, <coughs> ang isip ni Kristo sa ating buhay, tayo lahat ay willing mag-suffer katulad niya sa mga persecution ng ating pananampalataya. <coughs> and here it says, if we do that, we have rest from sin. Itong rest from sin, hindi na tayo gagawa ng kasalanan. Ito ang goal natin sa buhay. Sabi niya, he no longer spend his life in sinful pursuit. So isang tao, pag inadapt natin o kinopya natin ang isip ng Panginoon Jesus sa ating buhay, at tayo po ay willing mag-suffer sa lahat ng persecution dahil sa ating pananampalataya, ay tayo hindi na po magkakasala sa ating buhay. At hindi na magtuloy-tuloy uh, na mamuhay tayo ng mga sinful pursuit, ibig sabihin yung mga kas makasalanan katulad ng lust for the flesh, but uh, ang ating aim, ang ating goal sa ating buhay ay gagawa ng kalooban ng Diyos. So that is our goal or our aim in our life is to do the will of God. So tingnan natin anong gustong ipalabas ni Apostle Peter sa kanyang uh, teksto ngayon araw. Number one, the heathen do not understand the call. So sino ba ang mga heathen? Makikita natin sa 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 3 to 4. Ano ba ang sabi ng chapter 3 to 4? For we have spent enough of our life, past lifetime in doing the will of the gentle. When we walk in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, reveries, drinking parties, abominable idolatry. In regards to this, they think it is strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. So itong mga hitem ay mga pagano. Mga unbeliever po. Ang pagano or hitem ay unbeliever. Hindi nila maintindihan ang calling ng ating Panginoon. So tingnan natin sa letter A, it is natural for the unsaved to pursue sinful lust. Amen. And the varieties of sin from which Christian has repented are listed below. So lahat na unbeliever, unsaved sila. Hindi sila ligtas. Kaya tuloy-tuloy ang kanilang hinahanap na tinatawag sinful lust. Makasalanan po ang hinahanap nila. Makasalanan ang ginagawa nila. So titignan natin kung ano yung mga kasalanan na naganap sa buhay ng isang kristyano bago siya nag-sisi sa kanyang kasalanan. Bago siya po, bago tayo, mga believer, mga nanampalataya, ay nagiging kristyano, bago tayo nagsisi sa ating kasalanan, ganun din tayo. Marami din tayong nagawang makasalanan. Kaya tingnan natin, may anim na uh, sinful uh, act that we do when we are not Christian yet, when we did not repent of our sin yet, what are we doing? Number one, we call it lasciviousness or licentiousness. Ang labis, labis, 
la lasciviousness ibig sabihin nagkakaroon ng sexual desire no nagkakaroon ng uh, desire na gustong uh, makipagtalian ibig sabihin ang licentiousness ay walang moralidad so itong dalawa ay naganap sa buhay ng mga uh, unbelievers katulad natin noon unbelievers tayo ginagawa natin so meaning meaning itong dalawa is without morals immorality it described na minsan nakapagsalita ng mababahong salita masamang salita mga aksyon ng katawan natin ay hindi kalugod-lugod mga uh, lewd sex acts ibig sabihin mga masamang aksyon sa sexual na ginaga ginagawa number two last or passions no pag sinabi mo last yung pananabik po ang passion ay hilig ng katawan so passion no so in in themselves yung last may dalang bagay ang last yung pananabik pwede din mabuti pwede din masama so yung desire na gumawa ng kalooban ng Diyos ay mabuti pero ang desire na gumawa ng human last ay hindi mabuti ito ang sinasabi ng apostle Peter sa 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 11 ang sabi niya abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul so pag ginawa natin pag inabstain or huwag nating gawin yung tinatawag ng fleshly lust yung nananabik ng ating laman ay ito ay lumalaban sa ating kaluluwa bilang isang mananampalataya no tayo ay dapat alien at stranger sa mundong ito no tayo ay hindi taga dito po tayo ay taga langit so hindi dapat nating gawin ang ginagawa ng mga tao sa mundong ito, no? So, huwag tayo makilahok o sa mga tao na gumagawa ng masasama. So, uh, uh, and then dahil ang atin uh, real home ay kasama natin ang Diyos. Number three, excess of wine. Yung sobra-sobra ba sa pag-inom or kalasingan o lasenggo, tinatawag drunkenness. Sobra-sobra pag inom ng alak. Isa pa rin yun. Number four, rebelling. Ibig sabihin ng rebelling, it's, it refers to drinking parties. No, alam niyo sa mundo ngayon, di ba, ang daming tao pumupunta sa nightclub, pumupunta sa mga parties, tapos inom ng inom sila. Sobrang-sobra nang iniinom nila hanggang naglasing ng mga tao at mga kanilang guests. No? Number five, banqueting or carousing. Ito ay tinatawag ng isang klaseng party na wild. Wild drinking party. Na sobra-sobra wild yung mga tao na umiinom at naglalasing. Ito ay isang klaseng party. We call it banqueting. Number six, abominable idolatries ito. Or lawless idolatries. Di ba ang mga pagano, wala silang Diyos. Kaya nagsasamba sila ng Diyos Diyosan. So, lahat ng idolatry ay tinatawag kam, uh, abominable. Ang abominable, ibig sabihin kamuhi, muhi. No? But especially, uh, yung mga uh, idolatry na nagpropromote ng inuman. No? Nagpropromote ng lust in the name of religion. Kasi meron isang klaseng religion ngayon sa mundo na pagdating ng mag invite sila no and then iinom sila ng marami tapos ang mangyari doon nagse-sexual act sila doon so this is what we call abominable to the lord it's kamuhing kamuhi muhi na aksyon ng tao sa mundong ito so ito lahat na anim na item ay ginagawa ng mga pagano or unbeliever this are the uh, various sin that we have done in the past before we uh, repented of our sin before we become Christian. No? Number uh, Letter B, 
A Christian abstinence from sin is a silent rebuke to those who sin. Makikita natin sa 1 Peter uh, chapter 4 verse 4. Ano sabi ng 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 4? Ulitin natin. Sabi niya, in regards to this, they think it is strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. So, tayo mga Kristiyano, abstain tayo si sin. Huwag tayo magkasala. So, uh, ibig sabihin, kung abstain tayo ng sin, hindi tayo nagkasala. Ito ay isang uh, tinatawag na rebuke, silent rebuke sa mga makasalanan. No? So, nakikita natin yung mga hidden, mga pagano ay nagsasalita ng masama sa mga Kristiyano dahil nakikita nila na hindi tayo humahalok sa kanila at sumasama sa kanila. So, a person, kung ang buhay natin ay nagkaroon ng radical change, radical pagbabago sa panahon ng ating conversion, ay may experience tayo na tinatawag contempt. No? So, galit ang mga pagano, galit mga unbeliever, or nawawala silang respeto sa atin at sa atin uh, pagiging pag, pagiging kristyano dahil nakita nila na biglang nagkaroon tayo ng pagbabago sa atin buhay no minsan uh, ini-scorn tayo no nagagalit sila sa atin minsan pinag uh, pinag uh, pinagtatawanan tayo no they they make crack a jokes against them no against us na dahil ayaw nila na mag-participate sa uh, mga activities no dahil sabi nila uh, ibang klaseng tao ang mga unbeliever no they were talking about us not only because he they because we refused to participate in the activity ayaw natin makisama sa mga masasamang bagay ginagawa nila kaya ito ay nagiging isang uh, isang uh, silent rebuke sa mga unbeliever at ito ay sinasabi, ang priority natin kasi bilang isang anak ng Diyos, isang mananampalataya, ay pagbabago. No? A change in life. And tayo ay opposite direction sa mga pagano at mga hiter. Na wala silang, uh, uh, na punong-puno sila ng kasalanan. Ang, ang buhay natin ay nagiging isang... Uh, panakot no our life is in incriminate sa sinful activity no so ito ay tinatawag na uh, ang buhay natin ay idinadawit natin no sila sa kanilang masasamang activity so bilang isang uh, mature a christian katulad natin we are mature christian kailangan po tulungan natin yung mga paguhan na believers na magresist na wag wag sumama sa pressure ng opposition. I encourage natin sila na magbasa, maging faithful kay Kristo. I encourage natin sila na magbasa ng Biblia. Mag encourage nat natin sila na magtiwala sa ating Panginoon. Dahil ito po dissipation sinasabi ay uh, nagiging kumakalat na Salita ay sinasabi na walang kwenta, it is a wasteful expenditure, it is a wasteful na hindi makontrol yung paggamit ng alak. Hindi makontrol na nila yung pag-iinom ng alak, kaya ito po ay isang klaseng pagpupurso ng kalig kaligayahan. So, lalo na yung pag-iinom ng sobra sa sobra. They have that what we call the pursuit of pleasure. Sobrang uh, naghahanap ng kaligaya, kaligayahan ng kanilang laman. These are what the uh, pagan or the unbeliever were doing. So if we are abstain, kung hindi natin gawa, gawa, gawin ang mga kasalanan na ito, ay rinerebuke natin. No? Nakikita nila sa ating buhay. Parang 
na rebuke natin itong mga gumagawa ng kasalanan. So it is our duty as a Christian okay, to help them, to help the new believers to, to be faithful to our Lord Jesus and to apply whatever they learn from the words of God to, to their life. So tayo dapat ang mag-alok sa kanila para magiging, mag, magsisi sila sa kasalanan. Number two, every person will give account to himself to God. Amen yon. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 5 to 6, they will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. So, Ito ay tungkol sa Judgment Day. No? Lahat na tayo, no? no exception, all of us will be judged by God on the Judgment Day. Yung mga namatay, namatay na at naka, nakarinig ng salita ng Diyos at yung mga buhay pa ay lahat sila ay dadaan sa Judgment Day. No? They will be judged, no? They will be judged. All of us will be judged according to our life on how we live in the flesh. So, we are all ready for that. Have to be ready for the judgment day. And to those, no, nasa laman pa, katulad natin buhay pa, nasa laman pa, ay kailangan magtiwala sa Panginoon Jesus para i-share natin yung buhay na walang hanggang, no? sa ng Diyos sa mga taong hindi pa nagtitiwala sa Panginoon. So ang daming tao sa early church noon sa panahon ni Apostle Peter, concern sila tungkol life after death, no? So rine-remind ni Apostle Peter na death uh rine-remind tayo lahat na both the death, both the death and us the faithful pati ang oppressor natin ay dadaan sa judgment day. So we will be judged. Lahat tayo, mga namatay, mga nampalataya, yung mga nag-oppress sa atin, lahat sila will be judged. So the judgment will be perfectly fair. Fair ang pag-judge ng Panginoon sa atin. No? So sabi niya, pati yung mga namatay na nakarinig na ng salita ng Diyos ay dadaan din sa judge sa uh, sa pagjudge no ng ating Panginoon. Sa 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10, ano sabi niya? We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So ibig sabihin lahat tayo dadaan no sa judgment seat ng ating Panginoon. I-judge tayo lahat kung ano pang ginawa natin noon tayo ay nasa ating laman pa, no? Kung tayo ay uh, gumawa ng mabuti, gumawa ng masama, we will all be uh, judged by the Lord Jesus Christ. Number 3, Christian living demands faithfulness. Amen. So, pag tayo bilang isang nanampalataya, kristyano, kailangan po faithful tayo sa ating Panginoon. Dito makikita sa 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7 to 11. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayer. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sin and be hospitable a multitude of sin we, we will stop here up to verse 8 so letter A the imminence of Christ's return encourages faithfulness yung pagdatating malapit na ang pagdating ng second coming pagbabalik ng ating Panginoon ay ito man lang ay nag-encourage na sa mga Kristiyano magiging faithful po tayo sa ating Panginoon. Kailangan po mamuhay tayo na ine-expect natin everyday yung pagbabalik ng ating 
Panginoon Jesus. So be ready no, to meet Christ involved continual growing in love for God. So, kung tayo ay ready, ready, ready na tayo na sa lubungin natin ang Kristo pag sa second coming, kinakailangan po uh, lumago tayo sa pagmamahal sa Diyos at pagmamahal sa kapwa. Napaka-importante din yung mag-pray tayo regularly. At ito pa, napaka-importante din mag out tayo, tumulong tayo sa mga mahihirap o nangangailangan na tao. So, tandaan na natin ang ating kayamanan, ang ating status, ang ating kapangyarihan, ay ito ay baliwala sa kaharian ng Diyos. It is nothing in the kingdom of God. Because all of this, yung possession mo, kayamanan mo, status mo, kapangyarihan mo, one day ay hindi mo madadala sa langit. Hindi mo da- madadala pagdating ng ating Panginoon. So ano ang dapat natin gawin? I-invest natin ang ating oras, ang ating talento, ang ating abilidad, at maniwala tayo na lahat ito, at uh, lahat ito, abilidad natin, ay gagamit, hindi pwede po gamitin na nagbibigay ng pleasure sa atin. No? Or, wag natin sabihin na ako'y hindi binigyan ng special talent. Sabi ni, Ap- ni Apostle Paul, lahat tayo po ay binigyan ng special talent. Everyone has gift, but you have to find your gift and you have to use them. And, All our ability should be used in serving other people, no? Other people. Hindi pwede po gamitin ng ability natin para sa ating sariling kasiyahan. Amen. So Peter, sabi niya, ang atin mention niya ang ability natin ay speaking and serving. Huwag natin gamitin ito para sa ating sariling uh, enjoyment. So use it for serving other people. If we are given this ability to speak and to serve, use it for other people. In Matthew 24:42 it says, "Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. Christ's second coming will be swift and sudden. There will be no opportunity for the last minute repentance or bargaining. The choice we have already made will determine our eternal destiny. It may be drawing near as God comes time. So ito ang sinasabi ng Matthew 24, 42. Mabilis na ang pagdating ng Panginoon. Wala na tayong oras na magsisi. Wala din tayo, tayong oras na magbargain pa. So kung anong dapat gawin, gawin na natin ngayon. No? So the choice ay nasa sa atin. No? Kung gusto natin uh, magkaroon ng tinatawag eternal destiny, tanggapin na natin ang Panginoon sa madaling panahon. No? Kahit dahil wala nang time. No? Lalo na ngayon. Nakikita niyo ang gulo ng mundo. Nakikita mo ang dami ng nangyayari sa sanlibutan. May gera, meron din mga uh, apian, So, let's be ready for that. No? God is coming very soon. With all these signs that is around today, let's be aware that the Lord can come anytime to take us. So, in case, so Peter was explaining in 2 Peter 3 verse 8, one day, is with the, one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So ibig sabihin dito It's not only not only it is it true that one should be ready to meet the Lord when he comes at the end of the age, no. But since that may come at any time, one should be ready to meet the Lord at death. Kahit na namatay na tayo, kahit nandiyan pa tayo nabubuhay, ready tayo. Anytime God can come. 
no, to take us. Even the dead people, He will come and take them with Him in the air. Let there be more important than the time when one meets the Lord is the certainty that one will. So, we are to be ready. So, kailangan ready tayo. Tingnan natin ano sinasabi ni Apostle Peter sa verse, same, uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7, 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayer. Ano sabi niya? Be serious or be sober. Pag sinabi niya, be sober, seryoso tayo, matino tayo. No? Yung sober, ibig sabihin, seryoso tayo, matino tayo. That, uh, the, uh, kailangan po, parating may sound mind tayo. And kailangan, what's unto prayer? Let's all pray regularly. No? This is the things Apostle, Apostle Peter wanted us to do. In verse 7, sabi niya, be sober. Uh, kailangan matino tayo. Kailangan seryo, seryoso tayo. Kailangan magkaroon tayo ng uh, sound mind para sa ganun, we can pray regularly. Number two, he said in verse 8, ano sinabi sa verse 8? And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sin. So, ibig sabihin, above all, no? Ang ibig sabihin ng above all ay maliban sa ating duty na na tumulong sa kapwa, no? I, uh, uh, sabi niya, ang first command ng ating Panginoon is mahalin ang ating Diyos, no? Mahalin ang ating Diyos and then mahalin ang ating kapwa. So Proverbs 10 verse 12 said, hatred hatred stir up conflict but love covers over all wrong. Love seek to extinguish strife as water puts out flame. Love urges other most charitably. So, sinasabi, pag may pagmamahal ng isang tao sa kapwa, ang lahat na away, ang lahat na gulo, gulo ay mawawala. No? Mako-cover up. Katulad ng isang, katulad ng tubig, ay nakakapatay ng apoy. Love is a chari, chari, uh, extend our love to other charitably. Ibig sabihin, i-extend natin ang pagmamahal natin sa kapwa parate. No? Number three, we can see this, this in verse 9. Ano sabi niya? Practice hospitality and grudgingly to one another. So, hospitable or hospitality. Romans 12 verse 13 said, Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Amen? So, tayo ay need Christian hospitality. Ang Christian hospitality ay hindi po ibig sabihin magkaroon tayo ng social entertaining. No? Ang Christian hospitality ay by contrast po ay focus tayo sa uh, ibang tao, sa guest natin o ibang tao. So, ang atin, ang pangangailangan nila, no, ng ibang tao, i-extend natin, natin sa kanila. Whether uh, makikinig tayo sa kanilang extending our listening ear or acceptance are all the things that we need to extend to other people. We call it hospitality. No? Yun, pag may problema ng isang tao, ano, bigyan natin oras makinig kung ano ba ang hinanakit niya, ano ang problema niya. At tanggapin natin siya. Acceptance will show love to them because we want to show our Christian hospitality to other people. Number four is found in verse 10. Good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So God has many gifts, many talents, abilities He gave to us as believers. All of these are being used for ministering. No? God is the owner. No? Hindi tayo nagmay-ari ng gift natin. 
mga talento natin, abilidad natin. Hindi po. Ang nagmamayari lahat ito ay ang ating Diyos. No? Tayo ay bilang trustee lamang. No? Trustee means pinagkatiwala lang tayo. Yung mga gift, mga talent at abilidad. Trustee lang tayo. At hindi natin pwede gamitin itong lahat ng gift pansarili. No? It has to be used for the good of other people in His name. So gamitin natin po itong mga unmerited gift. Pag sinabi mo unmerited gift, ito ay hindi karapat-rapat tayo tumanggap ng gift na ito. Pero dahil sa gracias ng Panginoon, ibinigay niya itong unmerited gift sa atin lahat. Gift of like talent or ability. no? So we are just steward or we are just trusty to all this gift. So we need to use it not for ourselves. We need to use it for other people, to save other people, or for the good of other people. So, illustration of verse 11. Ano ang verse 11? It says, If anyone is speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. If anyone minister, let him do it as with the ability which God supply, that in all things, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So, tingnan natin yun verse 11. If one's gift is speaking, sabi niya, let him use it not for self, but for nobility, but in conformity with the word of God. So, the word of God is called oracles of God. So makikita natin sa tatlong verses dito tungkol sa oracle, oracle of God. In Acts 7 verse 38, He was in the assembly in the desert with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our Father and he received living words to pass on to us. Uh, this verse is talking about the Moses, the Mosaic law na dineclare ni Moses in Mount Sinai. So, ginamit ni ang Panginoon, Panginoon ang Diyos, ang, si Moses, bilang oracle, bibig lang niya ang ginamit para magsalita para sa mga tao. So, ito ay gift of what? Speaking ito. No? It is a gift of speaking. So, ginamit niya ang bibig lang ni Moses. But, the one speaking is the Lord, is our God. Romans 3 verse 2 said, Much in every way, chiefly because to them were committed the oracle of God. This verse referred to the Old Testament also. Ginamit ng Diyos yung bibig ng mga tao at the Old Testament time, all the prophets are being used of their, uh, of their lips in speaking the word of God. Yung mga sinabi ng mga propeta ay nanggagaling sa Diyos. No, sila lang ay nagiging uh, messenger or trustee ng kanyang salita para madala sa buong sanlibutan. Hebrew 5 verse 12 said, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principle of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk, not solid food. And this refer to Christ's teaching. In verse 2, ng, uh, verse 11, number 2, uh, second section, If one's gift is serving, let him or her do it not for pride or self-glory, but with the humble acknowledgement that one's ability to help is a trustee of God. So, ibig sabihin dito, kung ang gift natin ay mag, magsaserve, no? gawin natin mag-serve. Pero wag natin, pag nag-serve tayo, huwag tayong magiging lumaki ang ulo natin. Hindi tayo pwede mag-self-glorify sa sarili natin. Katulad ni Apostle Paul, may sinabi siya na noon nag, nag, naglingkot ng Diyos, hindi siya, hindi niya pinupuri sarili niya. Hindi niya, hindi niya sinasabi magaling siya. But he was saying, he was uh, glorifying God for using him. But with the humble knowledge 
ng ating abilidad ay nakakatulong sa kapwa. Pero ito, tandaan na natin, trusty lang tayo. Hindi tayo po ang nagsasalita. Kundi ginamit lang ng Diyos tayo, ating bibig, ating katawan, na magsalita ng kanyang, uh, uh, ang kanyang words sa mga unbeliever. So we are just an steward. We are just trusty. So we should not be proud and we should not be self-glorifying because all of these things belong to God. Our gift, our ability, our talent are coming from God. So walang pwedeng magmamalaki, walang pwede din mag-self-glorify. So lahat ito ay para kay Lord. Lahat ginagawa natin paglilingkod ay para kay Lord, hindi po para sa atin. In conclusion, the purpose of Christian service is that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So, uh, purihin ang Panginoon uh, sa kanyang salita ngayon araw ay tayo po'y ay manalangin. Father, we thank you Lord for reminding us today the call, a call of Christian living na kailangan po kami ay mamuhay ayon sa inyong salita at kami po ay pinagkaloob niyo ng mga gift, talent, and abilities na ito po ay para sa inyo din at hindi po para sa amin kalwalhatian. Panginoon, salamat po sa araw na ito at pinupuri namin, sinasamba namin kayo sa pangalan ng paatin Panginoon Jesus. Amen, amen. So join me in our uh, corporate prayer po. Samahan niyo po ako at ang kinin natin ng katugunan ng panalangin lahat na ito. Uh, let's use our faith in uh, claiming all this answered prayer. Uh, pray, uh, we pray for God's guidance and direction for year 2022. We pray that God will continue to bless its family with spirituality, with bless its family with spirituality, physically, emotionally, and mental health. Pray for God's divine intervention in this pandemic crisis throughout the world. Pray for God's healing be unto all nations and all people and that God will put a stop to the spread of this COVID virus. We pray for Hong Kong and Korea for healing as they face fifth waves of the, of the COVID surge. We pray for all those who are sick, who are in the hospital, the quarantine center, and those who has nowhere to go. We pray for healing, for comfort, we pray for the leaders of all medical frontliner that God will grant them strength, wisdom, and all resources that they need to fight this pandemic. We pray for all our uh, the nations of the Philippines. We pray for God's continuous intervention in our situation. We pray that the number of COVID will continue to go down, that we can all go back to our normal life. We pray that we, as we, as we are in transition into the new normal, we pray for God's shield of protection to everyone. That even as we go back to our normal life, the virus will no longer thrive in our midst, but will naturally disappear. Pray for healing for those who are sick, for those who are positive of virus, COVID virus, now confined in the hospital, in isolation and quarantine center, and in their respective home. We pray for complete healing. We pray also for comfort for them and their families. We pray for all frontliner. We pray for God's mantle of protections to be upon them. We pray that divine health and that God will shield them from COVID virus that they continue to discharge and fulfill their duties in their respective workplace. We pray for all the elderly, the vulnerable population, and those suffering from chronic diseases. We pray for God's healing and protection. We pray for emotional and psychological healing also. 
We pray for those who are going through financial difficulties and those who have lost their job. We pray for God's provision. We pray for God will open doors of opportunity for them to find another job or livelihood to sustain their family needs. We pray for J.O.L. Bagbagin. We pray that God will use this church to reach out to the community. We pray for, the, for Pastor Bernard, Pastor Susan, and their ministry team, that God will anoint them and use them in preaching His Word in that community. We pray for Pastor Belinda and her ministry team for God's guidance and direction, that God will use them mightily as they continue to do mission work and open Bible study center in Pangasinan. We pray for all JOL churches in Palawan, also in Birak. We pray for all JOL pastors that God will anoint them, use them to expand their ministry in the respective area. We pray for JOL my son for God's continuous protection upon all pastors, leaders, members as we continue to minister and preach gospel in the community. We pray for God's anointing be upon all of us. We pray for boldness in preaching the gospel of Christ. We pray also for God's protection as we resume and revive our face-to-face -face Sunday worship service and other ministry in the community. We pray that God will rekindle the fire in the hearts of every believers and that there will be thirst and hunger for God for His words and that they will prioritize and pursue God. We pray for revival in all JOL church and that God will cause the multiplications of dedicated spirit-filled pastors, leaders, worshipers, prayer warriors, teachers, and members. We pray for accelerations of spiritual growth among the pastor, leader, and members. We pray for acceleration, uh, we, and each one will give their best in their field of ministry, and they will be good stewards of God. We pray that God will direct the ministry of J.O.L. my son and all J.O.L. churches, and that God will open doors of opportunity for us to reach out to the unsaved soul and continue to share the gospel. We pray that God will continue to enlarge our territories, that His blessing and favors will continue to flow in the lives of all committed pastors, leaders, and volunteer workers of His church kingdom. We pray that the fivefold ministry will be activated in all JOL churches and that we will walk according to the precepts of God and not men. We pray for the salvations of every family. We entrust to you the salvation of our family. Raise up the younger generation that is on fire for the Lord. Pray also for the upcoming wellness activity in all the barangays in the Valenzuela city. We pray also for the resumption of all ministries in the community like Bahay Kalinga, Bahay Pag-asa, by Kanlungan and Jail Ministry. We pray for all pastors, leaders, and workers of all churches that they will be strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit as they continue to fulfill God's mandate to preach the word. We pray for safety and protection for all pastors and Christian leaders as they go out to minister to the people and we pray also for God's provisions. We pray for Mayor Rex, Vice Mayor Lori, Kong Wesley, Kong Eric, Senwin, all councillors, Barangay Captain, all health workers, all government officials, employees for their safety and protection as they continue to discharge their duty and serve the, the people. Pray for our President Digong Duterte for good health, wisdom in all his decisions. Pray for his salvation and his family that, and that our president will fulfill his mandates up to the last day of the office, his office in 2022. We pray for all senators, congressmen, governors, mayors, 
all elected and appointed government officials, including cabinet member, IATF member, we pray for guidance and direction from God. Pray also for their protection. We pray for the upcoming national elections 2022 that God will raise up qualified leaders to lead our nation. We pray for wisdom for all the people in choosing the right leaders for its position. We pray also for a peaceful and honest election. We pray for a peaceful resolution on conflict between Ukraine and Russia. We pray for the president and leader that God will grant them wisdom and guide them in all their decisions and that they will agree to peacefully resolve, resolve their conflict. We pray that Russia will pull out their troops from Ukraine, that President Putin will pursue peace rather than war. We pray for safety of the people in Ukraine. We pray for all the Christian as well as all our Kababayans living in Ukraine for their safety and protection. We pray that God's will will prevail and that he will take control over all the situation in Europe and in the world. We pray for all world leaders that they will have calmness and a heart that pursue peace and righteousness and that they will assist in finding a win-win solution to this conflict. We pray for Israel, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray that God's redemption plan for Israel and the whole world will come to pass. We pray that God's word will be preached in all nations. In such a time like this, the body of Christ will rise up to fulfill God's mandates in preaching the gospel to the world. Purihin ang Panginoon at ang kinin natin ang katugunan ng panalangin natin ngayon araw. Uh, let's all praise God and give glory to God in our time. Let's pray and continue to pray for the conflict in Ukraine. Maraming salamat. God bless everyone. Uh, may the Holy Spirit be upon everyone today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Want to know more about God's Word? Join us online every Wednesday, 6.30 in the evening for the midweek service. Make an impact with prayer. Join the intercessory prayer meeting online every Saturday at 8 o'clock in the morning. Sunday worship service can be watched weekly via Facebook Live at 9 o'clock in the morning. Do you want us to pray for you? You can send us your prayer requests via private message on our Facebook page and we will pray for you every Wednesday and Saturday after the online service. Our Sunday School is available for everyone. Just join our Zoom sessions every Sunday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. See you there! If you want to give your tithes, offering, and support for mission, you can give through bank transfer, GCash, or you may bring your envelopes to church and leave them in a drop box at the guard house. You may send the details of your giving to Jesus Our Life Official at gmail.com and follow this format. For more details, please send us a message on our Facebook page. Thank you and may the Lord bless you. Thank you for tuning in to our online streaming service. Outlines of the preaching and other weekly activities will be distributed by our church leaders for further Bible study. We would also like to encourage everyone to read their Bibles, meditate, and pray during these times. For more announcements and updates, please like our Facebook page. Have a blessed day.